Thanks for joining me today. This is Danny and welcome back to my Thumbcraft 5 series. Today we are going to get a little deeper into alchemy. We're going to get into Essentia Distillation and Metallurgy. So, which will allow us to make some pretty cool metals and do some ore doubling. I'm also going to play around a little bit more with Wan Foci and make a Wan Focus pouch. We're probably not going to get into focal manipulation yet today, but be soon. I've done a ton of research since the last episode. You can see all the stars are things that I've researched but have not yet read. So I've been pretty busy with that. I've researched most everything that I can, but you can see a few things that I can't research yet. And that generally means one of two things. Um, either there's something in another tab that we need to research, or it means that we have to scan something before we can even do the research for that item. And this one, the Thaumio Fortress Armor, um, I happen to know what we need to scan for that, and we're going to get into that very soon. But we're not gonna be able to make that today anyway because we have to get into infusion before we can make the Thaumium Fortress Armor. Grab a goggles, <laughs> I'll grab a goggles of revealing. And we're gonna start getting into metallurgy. We will be getting rid of the Crucible soon, or at least um, getting a better alternative soon, but there's a couple different types of metals that Thaumcraft adds. The first one is Thaumium, and that's what we're gonna be making now. Thaumium is very similar to iron. And it's slightly harder, it has similar durability, um, you can make a lot of the same stuff with it. And it's more enchantable, it has the same enchantability as, as gold. This is how we make it, we basically get some Terra <clears throat> and Ordo to in the uh, Crucible, and then we drop in some iron and that'll make us Thaumium. And it just so happens that chiseled stone bricks have one Terra and one Ordo, and this is just vanilla chiseled stone bricks, and that's perfect for making Thaumium. So, I have 18 bricks, <clears throat> chiseled bricks, so we should be able to make 9 thaumium. So I'm just going to drop all these in there. And now we have 18 of each, 18 terra and 18 ordo, so we can just drop all our iron in there, and now we have 9 thaumium. Hooray, it's a perfect clean recipe with no flux and no waste. So now we can make pretty much anything that we can make with iron, as I mentioned before. I'm Okay, we'll just make a chest plate right away. But we can make swords and all that stuff. So we might as well scan this right away. Just gain practical knowledge of Ordo, Metellum, and Premunio. Let's scan this right away too, our Yellow Knight. Or of course, it's a good idea to scan all the new stuff you make. Um, and we'll do the Crucible. Of course, you want to hold Shift. Now we have the Thaumium Fortress Armor. Hooray! And we'll be getting into that next episode probably, um, but we got that when we did our Thaumium chest plate, when we scanned that, that opened up the Thaumium Fortress armor. And then we also got the Arcane Lamp, we've opened that one up when we did the Nitor, when we scanned our Nitor. And sometimes when you scan things, it will actually add pages to existing research. Or doubling is fairly easy with, mine, or with Thaumcraft, we just need... Um, one metellum, one ordo, and then an ore. The, there's four metellum in each iron ingot, or pretty much any ingot. There's only three in the ore, so you're better off using ing uh, ingots, except you're even better off using nuggets, because each nugget has one, which means that you can get nine. Um, okay, I screwed up. <laughs> I totally forgot about the ordo. Darn it! I just lost a whole bunch of stuff, and, I, and now I'm releasing a bunch of flux into the atmosphere. Um, but we need one ordo and one metellum per iron um, ore, or whatever ore, and that'll give us these native ore clusters. Um, crap. Now I, I just need to figure out where I'm going to get a bunch of ore dough um, to finish this off. This is really one of the problems with the crucible, and we'll, we'll be solving that problem soon. So I've got, eight, I have 85 metellum in there now. Oh, crap. Um, but we can look, by the way, we can look in our Thaumonomicon under... Our aspects of magic. If we go to Ordo, because that's what we need right now, desperately and quickly. I, should, I shouldn't be screwing around like this, but um, and it shows us all the items that have Ordo in them. And uh, it's it's not particularly practical to look at it this way. Because I wish there was a way that you could kind of stop and scroll through it or whatever, but. Uh, but it looks like um, the chiseled bricks are really the best, even though they also have the terra. So we will be producing flux, um, but that's that's okay. We're we, that's practically unavoidable at this stage in the game. Um, well, or really at any stage in the game. 
Oh crap. And little by little I'm losing these aspects as you can see. Over time, they're dropping. So this is so it's a good thing that I screwed up. It gives me a chance to <laughs> to show you what happens when you screw up in the crucible. Now if we look at our thermometer, we can see there is actually a visible amount of paint taint in the upper left hand corner at the bottom, that little bit of purple. So it's not a terrible amount, it's not gonna cause any problems yet, but to have that much this early in the game is a little frightening because over time it will build up. There's a couple things we can learn from my little blunder. Obviously, double check your recipe first. <laughs> and secondly, probably don't throw a half a stack of something in the crucible at once. Um, because if you make a mistake, it's a lot easier to recover from a mistake when, when you only do a little bit at a time. Great, now we can put these in our smeltery and you can see that each one is going to give us, dun, 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 dun. come on, two iron ingots. So we're going to get two stacks of ingots out of that, well, nearly two stacks. So we actually did end up coming out ahead, <laughs> despite my blunder. And now this is really a good time for us to take a look at Essentia Distillation, because then we don't have to worry about stuff like this happening. And now we've got this 34 Terra in here that's going to be converted into flux. Let's see how bad our flux is now. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's getting there. It's a little frightening to have that much flux this early on in the game because uh, we're going to be adding a lot more flux as we go. Because um, even the Essentia Distillation will add flux. Um, but we'll be able to, it'll be more predictable. And we won't be losing as much Essentia. We won't have to worry about matching things up. So the first thing we're going to need to make is this Essentia Smeltery. And that's made with this what you see here. Now the brass plates are made from alchemical brass, which is made through the exact same process that we just did ex with the Thaumium, except instead of Ordo and Terra, it's going to be Aqua and Potentia. The best source of Aqua that I know of um, is warded jars, which we haven't even started talking about yet. Um, you can also use, you could use a bucket of water, but then you're also going to have a bunch of other stuff. You can use, come on in, you can use water bottles, um, but they also have vitreous. So the warded jars are something that we're going to be using when we get into essential distillation in a few minutes. Um, you know what, let's, I'm not going to bother. Right now, I'm actually using them just for the water. <laughs> That's all I care about. The best source of potentia is redstone. Redstone has nothing but potentia. So these are pure sources. So why don't we do two, two redstone, two warded jars. Let's see, is that going to be enough? So we can actually make four with this, and that's fine. Because we will be, we will definitely be using brass um, a lot in the future. There we go. That was perfect. No waste. So there's our alchemical brass ingots, and we basically make those, or do that to make our plates cauldron. Place it in the world. Hit it, hit it with our wand to make a crucible. And there we have it. I'm actually going to go upstairs to do our Essentia distillation, I've decided, um, just because we're going to be using our backyard. Is that our backyard? Yeah, that would be our backyard. We're going to be setting up our infusion back there, and it's good to have the distillation near the infusion altar. There. Hmm. Don't know if I like that there. Yeah, whatever. So the way this guy, oh, and then we're going to also have to make, well, actually, let's just use this thing first so that we can see how it works. So we throw some coal in here, and then we can throw whatever it is that we want aspects from in here. It'll burn them up, and then it'll store the aspects right here. And you can see there is flux. This, the Essentia Smeltery, this is the first tier smeltery, is very inefficient. It loses about 20% to flux. So now that it's just sitting in there, right? That does, that's not gonna help us. We need to be able to get it out, right? So we're going to make an alembic, but we're actually going to need to make some more brass. Remember when I said <laughs> we're going to need to make more brass? Well, here's more brass. And then these essentia filters and then great wood planks. Put that on the top and it's going to pull essentia out of here and it's going to put it up there. In fact, if we wear our goggles of revealing, 
I really need to come up with a better way to get up and down here. But if we wear our goggles of revealing, we'll be able to see what's in there. So we can see... We have four Terra in there. Um, and then it can only put one aspect in there at a time. So the four Ordo is still sitting in here. So there's a couple ways that we can get the Terra out of here. Um, one of them is to use pipes and to pipe it into those warded jars. The other way is much cooler than that. The Essentia pipes, or the Essentia tubes they're called, are a little clunky. Um, they're hard to work with. We're only going to use them, those for some very specific things. Essentia transfusion. You have to do a lot of research to get there. Um, you have to basically follow the research path all the way up there. Um, but this basically allows us, it gives us a filling Essentia transfuser and an emptying Essentia transfuser. These are new in Thalmcraft 5. The filling Essentia transfuser will fill up nearby warded jars. The emptying one will empty nearby jars and basically pull Essentia. This one will kind of push Essentia. We need more alchemical brass, we need a dispenser, and then an, an Essentia tube, and an alchemical construct, um, which requires more Essentia tubes, and, um, and then these Essentia valves, which are just a tube and a lever, and then this is the Essentia tube. So here's where we're going to be using Quicksilver. Um, I had talked a little bit about Quicksilver last time, but basically all it is is Cinnabar. Smelter. Cinnabar gives us a piece of Quicksilver, which we can then craft into Quicksilver drops, which is what we need for this recipe. First, we put down our warded jars, and we're, we're going to need a lot of these eventually. I wonder if we could just line them up. Oh, look at that. They actually fit. Oh, never mind. <laughs> We can put them within 16 blocks of this thing all around, although they do have to be in line of sight of that. <laughs> Hooray! Um, did we lose our Ordo? No, it's in there. Okay, here it comes. There. So it just finds the nearest empty jar and it'll put it in there. Now, if we and now we have a jar with a little bit of Ordo, and we have a jar with a little bit of Terra. And we can throw some redstone in there, and it'll throw Potentia in this jar. Now, eventually we're going to have a whole bunch of these jars, just kind of lined up and stacked and stuff all over the place. I'll try to make it look nice. <laughs> and we'll be using that Essentia for a lot of stuff, including the stuff that we used to do in the Crucible. The file is kind of like a little glass jar. It's just three glass and some clay, and that makes us eight glass jar glass files. Each one of these glass files can hold eight Essentia. So remember when we were doing our R doubling before, and we ended up with a bunch of extra Terra sitting in our Crucible yeah, sitting in our crucible, which ended up turning into taint. We can now take these files and grab the essentia that we want. So we need metallum. Actually, let's grab two of those. And we need ordo. Actually, we need a little... I'm going to make a little more ordo, but... But each one of these will hold eight. So we now have 16 metallum, eight ordo. So we have enough... And then if we grab, let's do some gold this time. Oh, our crucible is still upstairs. I mean, is, I moved our crucible upstairs. Crap. So we throw this in there. And you see we end up with exactly eight metellum. Now we have exactly eight of both. Ta -da! No waste. <laughs> And we now have eight clusters. Hooray! So we have two alchemical constructs. We have our crucible. And we, the crucible doesn't even need water. It doesn't even need to be heated anymore. And we put the two alchemical constructs on top of the crucible. And we hit it with our wand. And the direction, the side that we hit it on is going to end up being the front. So let's hit it on this side. And there we have it, our Thaumatorium. Hooray! So the Thaumatorium allows us to do everything that we could do in the Crucible, except with a nicer interface. So now if we want to double our ores, we stick them in here. It tells us what we need. We need Metellum, and we need Ordo. And we just click here, and it's going to, it's going to pull that stuff. Um, but we have to get the Essentia into here in order for that to work. 
again, there's a couple different ways we can do it. We can use pipes, blah, 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 but we're not going to. We're going to use this because this thing is freaking awesome. <laughs> so it should be able to pull Essentia from 16 blocks away, and it's going to try to pull Metellum first. And if there isn't enough, it, if there is no Metellum around, or if we run out of Metellum, it's just going to sit there and wait. It's patient. <laughs> it's not going to create flux or anything like that. So I'm just going to throw a bunch of iron nuggets in here to make some metellum. So we'll see that the metellum is going to head into this jar. And then from the jar, it's going to head over here. And then this stuff, it's just going to spill it on the floor. <laughs> so yeah, we'll just throw it on the floor for you. And that's it. We can put a chest in front of this thing, or a pipe, or whatever, and it'll, it, I'll put it into that. In fact, I am going to do that in fact, because I don't really want a chest sticking out like here. I might actually turn this thing. If we want to turn it, all we have to do is break it, put it back together, and then I'll just hit it on this side. So now we can just grab all of our ores and throw them in there. And eventually we're going to automate this so that we don't have to do it manually. And again, it needs metellum and or dough. It's going to grab whatever it can out of the jars. Oh, crap, we can't open that chest. It made as many as it could, but then it got stuck here. So right now it's got, if, when I hover over it, you can see it has metellum in it. It's just waiting for our dough. Our dough. And then over time, we're going to end up with a ton of terra because... Every time we want or dough, we end up with terra um, because I'm using the chiseled bricks to make our dough. And there is a way that we can deal with that. We have these voided jars, which basically allow us to, um, they'll fill up with 64 essentia. Each jar holds 64 essentia. Once it's full, it's just going to void whatever else it, what el whatever else it gets. Voltus. I'm hoping that scanning that feather will open up it did hooray the arcane levitator <laughs> i would like to make an arcane el arcane levitator which works a little bit like an elevator it's a block that you place in the world that floats you up so that we don't have to keep running up and down these stairs there's our arcane levitator not terribly expensive i can set this guy down click on the bottom of the block and then it's facing up and you can see there's a little bit of <laughs> little particle effect there when we step over it it lifts us up nice <laughs> I love it and then if you hold the shift key you can go down but it's kinda tricky because of the way I have it set up here but up down now we can adjust it it's because it's throwing us way up in the air uh, which it doesn't really need to do and it actually takes more V when it does that the higher it throws you the more V it takes so we can get underneath it. Pardon my messy cellar. <laughs> Just a cave under the house. If we right click on the bottom, it'll change. And you can see in the lower left, it, the range is set to 16 blocks. Now it's 32, now it's four. I think, actually, I think four is gonna be enough. And you can see it takes less V per minute then. Um, 16. Let's try four. I, I think actually four is going to be just a little bit under what we need, but we'll try it. See if it's if it's sufficient. Oh no, it's perfect. Oh yes. Yeah, and it actually makes it easier to get down too. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> I love that. A focus pouch. So a focus pouch is going to allow us to store a whole bunch of pouches in our inventory, I mean a whole bunch of foci in our inventory without having to have them take up a bunch of space in our inventory and it actually goes in the in the belt slot. Oh. <laughs> I finally found a slime! Hooray! <laughs> We're going to need these to make our grappling focus. Oh, we're gonna need one slime ball. And I actually don't have Tinker's Construct on here, so I couldn't just find a slime island. 
So I actually had to find a slime chunk, but it took me forever, man. I mean, in Extreme Hills, we also need some emeralds to make the... Is it this one? The excavation focus. So I'm just out gathering resources right now so that we can make... A, oh, we're going to make a few focuses. Foci. <laughs> I've made nearly every wand focus that we can make so far without infusion or additional research. Except for the wand of equal trade which requires these balance shards. We're going to be using balance shards for a lot of different things. So I'm going to take a minute to kind of uh, show you how I'm doing them. Um, of course, there's a number of different ways you can, but balance shards essentially require every single aspect, every single primal aspect and a shard, an existing shard. And the shard that you use, um, you don't need the aspect. Four. So if we do, if we use an air shard, we need two ignis, two water, two terra, two ordo, and two perdidio. Um, I'm actually going to be using water shards just because, just because <laughs> I have everything else. Um, terra, everything has terra in it, so I didn't have any problem getting that. Um, ordo, I'm getting from chiseled stone, which also has terra. The Ignis, I'm getting from Netherrack, which also has Terra. <laughs> the Air, I'm getting from... We can get those from ferns and grass. Just grab them with uh, shears. They also have Herba, <laughs> and you'll find that a lot of the stuff... We're going to... Herba and Terra are two things that we're going to end up getting a lot of in the long run. And then Perdidio I got from Cobblestone, which... Guess what? <laughs> also has Terra. So now all we have to do is stick a water our water shards in here. Now we could we could make water from uh, from warded jars. That's usually how I do water. I make empty warded jars and I throw those in here, and that will give us water. If we did that, then we could use any one of the other shards. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to use water shards. Whoa, I'm hovering. <laughs> And boom, balance shards, and it's going to pull out two, two of each aspect and make our water shards that look so cool. <laughs> look at that. I love those essential graphics. That's so cool. The transfusion graphics. So that gives us four balance shards. Hooray. All right, so here's all our wand foci. Now we can take these wand foci and we can put them inside our pouch. We would have to... We can put the pouch in our hand and right click on it and put the foci in that way. Or we can just select them with our wand. So if we select like, let's see what's still in our inventory. If we select like the grappler, it'll be on our wand. And then if we go and select something else, it will automatically put the grappler in our pouch for us. There it is. So I'm just going to dump everything in there. And then we can put our folk, our pouch back in our belt slot. So now we've got a whole bunch of wand foci to play with. Hooray! <laughs> and we'll be collecting these as we go along, and our wand is basically going to be a multi-tool for us, and we'll be able to do everything with it. But um, first of all, let's see. Let's just kind of go through these. This is... Let's start with the excavation one. Whoops. This one breaks blocks. And the upgrades for this one are pretty cool. Once we can, we'll be able to upgrade this thing to do like multiple blocks at a time. And what's cool about it is it like breaks all kinds of blocks. And then I also have a bunch of more offensive ones. We have fire now. <laughs> Which does that. It actually it has a hit damage and then it also sets sets the mob on fire. Oh look, we got two strings. Nice. Always, always looking for more string. And then we looked at the uh, shock focus yesterday. That was my favorite. Well, I don't know. It was yesterday, but the last time we played. And then we, what's, what else do we have for offense? We have frost. Frost um, throws like some ice-like stuff, <laughs> and it also slows down um, our enemies. Okay, I thought I saw some enemies up here. Oh, there we go. So you can see that it gave him some hit damage. Here's our shock focus. Where did it go? Oh, there we go. So 
So it does take a few hits. Let's say we wanted to make this look nice and replace all these blocks with, well, I guess I don't really have any nice looking blocks, do I? Cobble, whatever. <laughs> we can take our equal trade focus, shift right click on the cobble, and then right click here and it'll replace all similar blocks with whatever block you specified and it'll bring them back into your inventory. So it takes it from your inventory and then it pulls back the other blocks into your inventory. So if we want to replace these <laughs> because there's so many, it will. One of my favorite ones, and this one's brand new, is the Builder's Wand. And this one, it works the same way. You shift right click to select a block and it actually is retaining the selection from um, the wand of equal trade. Tw <laughs> the wand of equal trade. If you look in the upper left hand corner, um, you can see there's a little cobblestone block in the middle of my wand thing. Um, that's telling us that currently cobblestone is selected. So we can do this from up to 62 or 64 blocks away, and it'll place up to 16 blocks. And we can upgrade this in the future to do even more. And it'll even replace existing blocks. So it'll place blocks all the way up to where we are. So if we do you know, like that, they'll do that. But if we do it down here, it actually replaces those blocks with cobblestone. And unlike the block of, I mean, unlike the wand of equal trade, it'll replace all the blocks, even if they're not the same type. So, but the wand of equal trade actually does more blocks. So I've saved the best for last, or at least my favorite. And that is the grappler. <laughs> this one is going to make things a lot easier, or make traveling a little easier for us. Because it will allow us to grab things. <laughs> and grapple. Hooray. And it, it does have some momentum, so you have to be kind of whoops. You have to be kind of careful because it will make you fall <laughs> if uh, where you land is not someplace where there's a block underneath to catch you. And sometimes it'll actually overshoot you too because you, there's momentum involved. Ah, okay. So it does take a little getting used to. <laughs> To use it without killing yourself. But it's a totally fun way to get around and it's it's fast. You can even just grapple the ground to make you go faster. Whoa! Ow. Like that. <laughs> It'll just pull you along. Whoa. It's a little hard to do it in the forest though, but like if you're going through the plains it's a little easier. I think you can actually grapple against animals, too. Here, let's see. Yeah, I pulled us right at the zombie. <laughs> nice. Whoops. In the next episode, we're going to start getting into infusion. And that's when things are going to start getting a little bit more interesting, because most of the really cool stuff that you can make in, for, in Thomcraft require infusion. We're going to make some Boots of the Traveler, and we're going to make a better wand so that we can upgrade our Essentia stuff. We'll do the Thermostatic Harness, probably not next, but very soon that'll allow us to fly. We'll probably get into Elemental Tools, which are freaking awesome. We can replace our Iron stuff. And sometimes in the next couple of episodes, we're going to get into Golem and Sea, and we're going to automate a lot of stuff. We can automate our ore doubling, we can do a farm and a tree farm. But if you do have any questions or you just want to say hello or have any comments, feel free to do so in the comments below. And if you enjoy this, don't forget to click the like button and to join me next time. Thanks for watching.